Salas, first of all, you haven't uh, finished uh, or read a, a lot of Gossetta Watchmen, but uh, your reaction to the book so far? I, I really love it so far. You know, it's, um, I think it's exactly what the publisher is presenting it to be. Uh, they're not saying it's a new masterpiece or anything like that. It, it just feels like I'm learning more about Scout and Atticus and Calpurnia and Jim and you know, and I just, I love seeing uh, what Harper Lee was thinking in those early stages. I'm sort of looking at the book, um, maybe the way that an archivist would, or, you know, I'm I'm not going into the book thinking, oh, I'm not comparing it to, to Kill a Mockingbird. I'm seeing it as a companion, and so far I've really, I love what I've read so far, especially the way, uh, what a strong, feminist story it is so far um, because you know Scout now in the book known as Jean Louise is just she's this really strong independent woman exactly how we thought Scout would turn out you know but um, the book set I guess in the very late 1950s and um, she is really coming up against a lot of uh, just as she did as a child you know gender expectations and she's defying those. I love the way that Harper Lee is, has written about a, a young Southern woman taking ownership of herself and um, not worrying about other people's expectations and just being who she is. So that's the thing I'm seeing a lot in the beginning that I really love. Can you tell much at all about um, her writing style, whether it 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 has um, changed uh, at all? Because as we both know and as people that have read sort of the backstory of this, or the story about uh, Gossetta Watchman. Uh, this Gossetta Watchman was written first. Mm -hmm. They asked her to to revise it, and, and out of that came To Kill a Mockingbird, and she changed the, the time period and all of that. And uh, so do you see any, any any difference in the way she, her language, her, her sentence structure, uh, the things you look at as a professor of, of mm -hmm. writing uh, that you normally would look at? Well, I don't mean to diminish Harper Lee's writing at all, but I think that when you compare this to To Kill a Mockingbird, you see what an amazing editor she had on To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. Just such a smart editor. And I'm a novelist. I'm a writer who really believes that you know, in the power of a good editor. I think that's a relationship that, that makes a great book. Um, I know that you know I have learned so much from the editors I've worked with. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a thing of cooperation and learning from each other. And um, I think that To Kill a Mockingbird really benefited from that editor's touch. On the other hand, I'm also really enjoying this really authentic early voice of Harper Lee. Uh, it's very, very witty. Mm -hmm. And I mean, To Kill a Mockingbird's witty. This is a, a more adult wit, um, mm -hmm. a little bawdy and naughty in, in, a, in a way. And um, I really love that about her. In a way, it, it, it's sort of the way I always imagined Harper Lee would be, more so than Scout, if that makes sense. So I think in To Kill a Mockingbird, um, she and the editor spent a lot more time creating this character of Scout um, and making her a little more separate from Harper Lee. Maybe I'm just projecting that. It, it feels very autobiographical so far. One of the fascinating things about uh, th this whole story, I, I remember when I first read months ago um, that this manuscript had been discovered and there was this um, momentum building about the release of it. And then just, just days ago or weeks ago, we find out uh, by somebody leaking or seeing the first chapter or, or, some, uh, or the, the publisher revealing that, that Atticus Finch is, is a different has a different persona, mm -hmm. um, is not the person that we saw in To Kill a Mockingbird and is not the person that we saw Gregory Peck play mm -hmm. on screen. How do you accept that? How, how should the reading public, how would you advise that they look at that? Well, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, I think, you know, Atticus, as we know him in To Kill a Mockingbird, was definitely ahead of his time, I think. And um, I think that when great change happens, it really challenges people. 
good people and bad people, and it brings out the best and the worst in people. And in Ghost Set of Watchmen, we are in a world where change is really happening, where the civil rights movement is beginning. Um, Brown versus the Board of Education decision has just come down, and I think that's scary for a lot of people, especially older people mm. who are used to one way of life and it's changing. I mean, the recent Supreme Court decision on marriage equality really brings that to light, you know, and immediately following that we have all this backlash mm. occurring. So on one hand, it's surprising that Atticus and a, a little disappointing for us because, you know, that's why he's such a great hero to so many of us. I mean, for myself, I was in the seventh grade when I read To Kill a Mockingbird. I was raised in what I feel is a pretty racist place um, and a, a kind of casual racism that occurred in southeastern Kentucky that sort I Sort of knew. whispered. Yeah, uh, it was always there, mm -hmm. um, but also very casual mm -hmm. is the best way I know to describe it. For me, Atticus was the touchstone for me that taught me that a lot of, that, that was wrong that I sh should start thinking differently about that. And so I think that's one reason I'm so attached to the book because it had such a profound impact on me about race. And so now to learn that that great hero is, has a lot more complexity in that area um, and some problematic aspects, um, it is disturbing. However, I haven't read all the way into the book, so I don't know how nuanced that is or anything else. And I found it a little, you know, disconcerting to see all the online chatter all these people so adamantly opposed to reading it because of that from my point of view is I, I need to read the book for myself and make my own decisions and not let other people tell me how to think about it um, it's that, that's all a complex thing you know I mean there's some controversy about how it came to be published too that have some people um, sort of feeling conflicted about reading it and I respect all that conflict that's going on in people, it's good to see people having those moral quandaries about the book. I can see you sort of writing a, a syllabus in your own mind right now. Uh, Salas is a, a great teacher. Um, he uh, teaches uh, at Berea, he's a professor there, but he also teaches at the Appalachian Writers Workshop uh, in Heinemann, and I was uh, fortunate to sit in his uh, Appalachian um, uh, history uh, of uh, Appalachian oh, yeah. literature just a, a, a few years ago and and I, so I know your technique and and, and even though Harper Lee you, you could teach of course uh, To Kill a Mockingbird which you may have or somebody mm -hmm. else has but but now with this I, I would think that um, th th this would be a fascinating semester of work would it not? It would yeah I mean there's so much you could do with it and I, I think it's it's just great how much conversation is happening about this piece of literature in the last week or so and you know um, the controversy and all that people are talking about books and literature and I love to see that I love to say, see my Facebook feed lit up with people talking about book you know that's a good thing right Silas House thanks a lot thank for coming you in. always appreciate to see you